Hey folks, how you doing? I had a viewer ask if I could explain a little bit more about the way I go about uh, using the lawnmower to mulch leaves. So I thought what I would do is go ahead and just spend some time kind of talking about the, the method I use uh, for cleaning up leaves in the fall uh, without vacuuming them up, without, you know, raking them into piles and carrying them away. But basically by just blowing them out of the beds, blowing them into the lawn, and using the lawnmower uh, to mulch them. So what I'm going to do is just use me cleaning the leaves up as a backdrop and uh, we'll just go ahead and do a voiceover and, and I'll just talk a little bit about, uh, about the method to my madness. The first thing I want to talk a little bit about is uh, PPE, personal protective equipment. And uh, you know, I've been doing this since I've been around 15, 16 years old, using power equipment. Um, I've used no respirator at times, I've used no safety glasses at times. And the more I do this, the more I realize it's, it's better to be safe than sorry. So I do wear both ear plugs and ear muffs whenever I use the leaf blower. Uh, I use a P100 respirator if I'm gonna use the blower for more than a minute or two. And I also keep my safety glasses on to keep anything from bouncing back and getting in my eye. And in my book, it's just um, kind of like a you can pay me now or pay me later situation. So I'd rather just take a few minutes and put the PPE on and keep the junk out of my lungs and keep my hearing than, uh, you know, than not wear it. And, you know, something bad happened. So I started this video with the gloves on and uh, decided not to, to wear them. It was kind of a warm day. So this is kind of funny. Usually you press the primer bulb four to five times, full choke, full throttle, pull it once, it'll, it'll half start, pull it a second time, and it'll start. <laughs> but uh, the machine actually just started in one pull today. Uh, again, it was a beautiful day. It's probably in the mid-60s. Uh, blower started right up, over 10 years old. Can't say enough about echo equipment. Real nice stuff. Notice that log I've got the blower on top of. That's a nice little uh, little trick. If you've got a pickup nearby, or maybe there's a bench or something, you know, leave your blower on the, the, the bed of the pickup or the bench and uh, save your back. The first thing I want to say is I always try to blow leaves when they're as dry as possible and when there's as little wind as possible. And the more you do leaves, you'll you'll know when they're gonna be either too wet or it's gonna be too windy. And you know, it's it's just a matter of the more the more you do it, the more you learn. Um, but you know, you see how nice they're blowing. Um, it's no accident that, that I'm doing what I'm doing today. I mean, it is the weekend, which is why I'm doing it, but you know, I wouldn't go out and, and try to do what I'm about to do right after a rainstorm. And you'll also notice, you know, there's not really a lot of leaves. And the, the more I use the lawnmower to clean leaves up, the more I've realized that it's better to, to clean the leaves up more often and, and shred them than it is, you know, to let them sit. So I try to get out, you know, at least once a week and do what you're seeing here. Um, but there have been times this year where, you know, there's certain weeks when more leaves fall than others. So midweek I'll go out and do, you know, just what I'm doing here as well. Because you want to try to stay ahead of, of the leaves falling as opposed to waiting. There's a video I put out probably five years ago, four years ago, I don't remember, where I, you know, I let a lot more leaves fall. And the more I do this, you know, the more I try to get them more often and make it easier on the equipment and, and on myself as well. So, you know, all I'm doing is, is just blowing the leaves onto the lawn. And you just want to get them as often as possible, you know, before they get too heavy because it's easier to mulch them and, and make the leaves disappear. Um, you, can, you can only mulch so many leaves into the lawn. And, uh, you know, just as you're watching this picture, you know, look to my left there. I mean, that's a row of, of sugar maple trees. 
there's going to be a lot of leaves here. So rather than waiting until it, you know, I'm inundated, uh, I try to get out weekly and, and even more often than that, when it's peak season, the leaves are dry. It's a nice day. You know, I've got a decent blower. Uh, this this is actually fun, you know, for, for the first hour or so. Uh, it's, it's actually fun, you know. Um, but again, I, you know, if you're watching this video, you're probably someone who enjoys power equipment in the outdoors. I just looked up my leaf blower and the, the label fell off, but I'm pretty sure it's an Echo PB650, which is a commercial duty blower. And the piece of uh, info on the internet I'm looking at is from 2003, so it may be older than I think. But uh, the blower is 63.3 cc's. It's got a maximum airspeed of 201 miles per hour and 625 CFM cubic feet per minute at the pipe. Whenever I bought that blower, it was state of the art. And I was going from uh, an Echo PB400E, which is like a dinosaur, and that PB650 was just an amazing amount of power. And it just, it's crazy what they can do with leaf blowers these days. And I don't want to tell you, I mean, if you're a commercial guy, you know, some of these blowers, I think they're over a thousand CFM now. It's ridiculous. But uh, even if you're a homeowner, if you have a property that's like around the size of what, what you're seeing here, um, it takes me about one tank of gas in that blower to, to do the leaves. But, um, you know, you, I don't want to say you, you can never have too much power with a leaf blower. But more power is, is usually better with a leaf blower. With the exception that, you know, some of them now, the, the backpack blowers have the same amount of power that the wheel blowers used to have back in the day. So I, I don't really know if you need that much power for, for something like what I'm doing here. You know, obviously, if you're going to be using a leaf blower all day, every day, those monsters, you know, any of you guys have used some of those new monster ones with the, the tubes that are like twice the diameter of what I have there, let me know how they are. But um, what I'm trying to say is, is you know, get, get a good blower. You know, again, if this is your hobby, this is something you're into and you're going to be doing it weekly um, because it really does make a difference. I had... Um, I had one customer a while ago who uh, let me use their blower, and it was a it was a Husqvarna blower. It was a it was a decent blower, but it was the the residential model, and compared to the blower you're seeing now, and it was a Husqvarna blower that was probably only two or three years old, and, and compared to the blower I'm wearing now, it just it just was not fun to use um, because it just didn't have the same power which meant, you know, when you're blowing leaves out of the shrubs, you had to get in there closer. If you're trying to blow leaves into the woods, you had to kind of walk into the woods. So, you know, just, I don't think you need the, the biggest, baddest blower. I mean, some of those ones out there are just crazy, but the one below, um, you know, definitely for commercial guys, and if you're a prosumer type person, you know, See if you can rent. Uh, see if you can rent some blowers and, and see what you like. I'm not sure if um, if you noticed or not, but I did take off. There's a little uh, tube that goes on the end of the blower. It's like a little 45 or so that helps you direct the air better. And um, what a lot of guys do in in the trade is remove that piece, and it it gives you a little bit more of an airflow. Um, the only trade off is. I believe it does make them louder. I know Echo makes a, a quiet blower now, and it's, you know, I'm pretty sure, somebody correct me from Echo if you're watching, but I'm pretty sure with their quiet blower, you need to keep that piece on the end to keep it quieter. So, you know, just a heads up, you know, if you want as quiet an option as possible, leave that piece on. But, but again, a lot of guys in the trade, it's, um, a fairly common practice to remove that little angle at the end. The, the angle on the end is good if you're, you know, trying to blast leaves off the ground that are stuck to the ground, frozen to the ground. But for, for situations like this, um, we usually just take it off and, and go with it. Uh, again, making sure we have 
you know, double hearing protection. You know, I'm kind of, uh, kind of running out of things to say about leaf blowing here. And um, I'm, I'm going to try to just keep talking just so you can kind of see what it looks like. And it's, it's almost interesting to watch myself work because it feels like it's taken forever whenever I'm doing this. But it actually seems like it's going at a decent, uh, a decent rate. But, um, you know, what you're looking at there on the right side of the screen, that is a Holzhausen. Um, if you do a CT Scaper Holzhausen, uh, do a YouTube search. Uh, I made a bunch of videos about those. And I did start building that one probably about uh, four or five weeks ago. And I just haven't had a chance to get back to it. But I, I do hope to make a video uh, about, um, about building that, uh, that Holzhausen. As I get closer to the woods, I, I do just want to say that, you know, whenever you're, you're blowing leaves near the woods, you want to do your best to, to kind of feather them into the woods. Uh, you don't want to just dump a big pile right at the edge of the landscape, you know, so you'll, you'll try to spread them out when you get to the woods and, and you know, kind of taper the depth so, you know, close to the house is maybe a little less deep and then, you, you know, maybe it gets a little bit deeper the farther away you get. Basically just spread them around a bit. Uh, it looks a lot more natural and it doesn't look like somebody just dumped a ton of leaves in the woods, um, but, you know, basically just looking a lot more natural. Once I've got all the leaves uh, blown out of the beds, and, and I will admit I, I've got a decent amount of beds in my property, uh, I'm a plant person, and uh, you know I enjoy plants, and I enjoy nice neat beds with crisp edges. But um, you know once you get them all out of the all out of the beds, um, I grab the mower, and I'm not really trying to neatly mow the lawn, the first thing I do is just go around where all the heavy leaves are and shred them. And I won't even lower the mower deck on the first pass here. Uh, keep the deck up high and I'll just kind of do circles and uh, keep mulching them. Sometimes if, if I want to get them away, you know, because this is closer to the trees, there's usually a lot of leaves in this spot. So sometimes I'll, you know, work from one way and only push the leaves, you know, one way when I'm mowing. Um, but basically, just to start, just go around and, and mulch them. Now, you know, I don't anticipate that, that homeowners watching this are going to have a mower like I have. So if you've got, you know, like a 21-inch mulching mower, um, you just raise the, the mower up all the way and, and mulch them, you know keep the mulching kit on and, and, and mulch the leaves up high uh, or mulch with a normal height and if there's not too many they'll just disappear. If you've got a mulching mower and there's a ton of leaves you're kind of a step ahead because you can use the mulching mower to mulch them and then lower the blade a bit and you know bag them the second time around. So this is why I wear a respirator, uh, this cloud of dust right here. Um, it's really nasty if you don't wear a respirator, and when I was younger, I wouldn't. Um, guys that do this for a living can confirm uh, it gets really nasty. So, you know, you really want to wear a respirator when you're doing this. And like I said earlier, I'm, I'm mowing these leaves right now, the first pass. Uh, at the highest height the mower has. Um, but I guess I should say that I do mow my lawn uh, very high. I, I don't use any chemicals in my lawn. Uh, so, so I do mow my lawn actually at four and a quarter uh, for this mower. Uh, you see there how I'm, I'm kind of using the mower to push the leaves away, you know, away from that one spot because that's usually where there's a lot of, there's a lot of heavy leaves. So you can almost use the, the, the lawnmower like a leaf blower to push them away from a certain spot. The other thing that I'm doing is I do have mulching blades on this lawnmower, which I don't know if, if all lawnmowers have mulching blades now, but um, you know, in my lifetime, mulching blades became like the thing. Um, but I do have a set of what are known as uh, gator mulcher blades on this mower. 
And if you buy the, the blades from Toro, it's called the Toro Atomic. So the blades have like three fins on them and they're designed to, to mulch the grass or the leaves uh, really well into small pieces. And I, I don't know if they still make non-mulching blades, um, but I don't see why anybody would use anything but uh, a mulching blade these days. So basically I just, you know, you just keep running the leaves over and, you know, you run them over till they disappear, or for the most part disappear. And, you know, there, there really is no right or wrong way to do this. So, you know, experiment with, with different things. Uh, like I said, sometimes you can, you know, you can go just back and forth and push them one direction or the other. Uh, sometimes I'll only mow, you know, one direction. Later in the video, I'll show you how I do that, but basically you mow pushing the leaves one way and then on the return strip You return the exact same path you just mowed so each pass You know up and down you, you're only mowing one strip and that way you can just keep pushing the leaves whatever direction you want to uh, That's another option uh, You know some people will will just if, if you have a different type of lawn, you know, you just do circles in the whole lawn. I probably, for this situation, could have just kept doing circles and, and mowed everything until they were gone in the middle. Uh, you know, push them all towards the center. Once everything's in the center and kind of in a pile, then just push them all away from the center until they disappear. You know, um, that there really is no one way. Uh, you'll notice that if you have a mower like I have, um, if you if you drive the mower backwards, I don't know why, but it actually does shred the mower, shred the leaves up finer. It's the weirdest thing, um, but I try not to do that too often because you never really know what's going on behind you, especially if you've got other guys with you. You know, you don't even want to come close to, you know, hitting somebody with a mower like this. Not a good thing. Uh, and, and the only other thing is when you're when you're doing this, um, and you're shredding the leaves on the first pass, you really want to try to, to, when you're pushing the leaves, push them away from trees, push them away from beds, you know, basically just push them to where the lawn is open. Uh, sometimes I see people doing this where they'll, they'll do circles like around a tree and they'll end up pushing all the leaves into the tree. Uh, you really want to do the exact opposite of that, where you push all the leaves away from the tree, so it's it's less work to go back with the blower and blow them away from the tree. Um, and it's also, you know, no good for trees to have a bunch of leaves pushed up against the bark. After I mow the lawn, you know, with the mower blades all the way up and, and shred the bulk of the leaves, and it doesn't have to be perfect the first time, but eventually you'll get a feel for, for how much you can leave on the lawn that will then get incorporated when you go back and do your regular mowing. You know, so right here what I've done is is I've gone from having the blades all the way up at the highest setting to my mowing height, which for me is four and a quarter, possibly four, but I think I was at four and a quarter here. Um, and you'll go back and just do your regular mowing and, and putting your stripes in the lawn. And again, this is something that it, it's really up to you how fancy you want to get. Um, again, I enjoy mowing the lawn. This for me is relaxing. So, you know, the lawn still looks good. So I, you know, I double cut it. Um, first I shredded, then I double cut. I probably could have gotten away with just shredding the leaves and single cutting, or there may be times, you know, when you can just, just shred the leaves. You know, if it's only been a few days, if it's a time when they fall uh, very quickly, you know, the, again, there really is no right or wrong answer. If you were doing this with a mulching mower, you know, you would raise the blades up all the way, go over the, the heavy spots of leaves, and then, you know, lower your blades down and just go ahead and incorporate the leaves. You know, do your stripes with the mulching mower and incorporate the leaves. Uh, there really is no difference between the mower I'm using and if you're using a, a 21 inch mulching mower, uh, I just, I kind of feel like the mower I'm using here is, is a little bit of cheating because it's got a lot more power and there's three blades under there. 
Um, but, I, I mean, I've seen the job that the modern mulching mowers do, and, I mean, they can really, they can really make some leaves disappear um, pretty quickly. But the thing you do want to remember, uh, whether you're using a commercial mower like I have, or your, your mulching mower, is it's really better for the lawn to leave that lawn high. Now, four, four, four and a quarter inches may be a little bit much for you, but, you know, try to get it up to three, maybe three and a half if you can. Um, it's really best for the lawn. And one difference that I, that I do when I'm mulching leaves, you know, now, as opposed to the video I put out four or five years ago, was I leave my mower high, I leave the, the cutting height high until the end of the season. Because what you're doing by leaving that grass long is you're holding those leaves up higher and making it easier to mulch them. And you know, you're, you're mowing on a regular basis anyways. So it's, it's not like you know, the lawn's gonna get out of hand. Um, because again, part of this process is, is to continue basically with a weekly mowing but incorporating the leaves. Once the first frost comes, the grass is gonna, it's gonna slow down growing, and it's also, you know, it may kind of, you know, fall over. So, so once the first frost comes, then maybe you can start to slowly lower that, that mower deck. But I really do, you know, the way I do it now is I try to leave the mower deck as high as I can, as long as I can, because it's good to have the grass establishing deep roots. There's a correlation between the length of the grass blade and how deep the roots are. So by leaving it long, we're encouraging it to have nice deep roots. Um, but also because, you know, we want the leaves to be held up high and we want to have a lot of thick, lush grass to lose the leaves in. As long as we're making a video with a beautiful shot of, uh, of these stripes, uh, if you ever wondered, the light-colored stripes are the ones that are going, the mower is going away from you. And the dark-colored stripes, as you can see, are the ones when the mower is coming towards you. So if you happen to be mowing the lawn and you want to cross the lawn for some reason, uh, usually what I'll do is I'll go around the outside. But if I was going to, for some reason, want to mow this lawn again in the same pattern, just find a light colored stripe, you know, if you're going away from the camera and, and head down that stripe. Uh, it really is that easy. It, it becomes second nature. You know, it's so hard to film without somebody walking in front of the camera. So this area is about as, about as heavy of a leaf load as I could deal with and mulch the leaves into the lawn and and honestly it's really too many leaves in this area but because i have the forsythia bed back there and then the garden to the back left and behind uh, i'll usually just end up mulching the leaves and then um, you know blowing them into the garden and what i did uh, last year is is i mowed the leaves mulch the leaves and then blew them into the bed and used them as, as like a mulch. You know, there's a good three inch layer of leaves and the plants loved it, uh, which is gonna lead me to basically do some more experimenting with, uh, you know, using leaves as a mulch in beds, which is, it seems glaringly obvious. Um, the secret is to find a way to, to shred the leaves and get them to stick in the beds, um, you know, and, and look appealing. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the mower, but I'm only gonna mow when I'm coming from right to left, or I'm gonna mow going both ways, but I'm only gonna push the leaves when I'm going from right to left. So what you're gonna notice is I'll mow and push the leaves you know, to my right, but when I return, I'll basically go back the same strip so I won't you know, end up tossing leaves back the way I came. And this is something that uh, was taught to me by a guy years ago who, who learned it from a, another company he worked at. Uh, and it, to me, it's just utter genius. So, you know, if you've got a lawn with a bunch of leaves and maybe it's a little bit you know, more than you want or, or for here, I'm gonna end up mulching these into the woods anyways. Um, you just, 
you just only mow when the mower is going you know one direction then you return on the same path and it, it's like a brand new lawn it's like a perfectly clean lawn so later in the season when there's more leaves falling down if I didn't have the the forsythia behind and the woods behind I would definitely have to you know just keep doing circles make a pile of leaves and then get a tarp and, and rake the leaves on the tarp and put them somewhere else you know, preferably in a garden bed where the plants can take advantage of the nutrients. Worst case, you know, you, you mulch them in the woods somewhere. But, um, you know, this would definitely be a situation where I, I couldn't just mulch all the leaves that fell here in this one spot. And if you had a yard like this and you were using a 21 inch recycler, you know, you would just go through and mow the lawn on the highest height or a higher height and then drop the mower down the second time and do your stripes with the bag on and and just take your time and you know these these modern mulching blades are just so darn good that it's going to shred them up put them in the bag you lay a tarp on the ground dump the leaves on the tarp before the tarp gets ridiculously heavy you drag it to the woods you drag it you know to some spot in the yard you, you know you want to bring nutrients uh, it really is. It really is that easy. And the secret again is is with the mulching mowers. You know, if you keep up with it, and if your lawn is thick enough, those leaves are going to stay on top of the lawn, so they're not going to um, they're not going to be too much for the lawn, and and you can pick them up perfectly. You know, fine with that mulching mower. So this mowing, I did go back and you know put some stripes but this is a very shady spot so you know usually I just focus on getting the leaves later in the year I mean the grass in the shade you actually want to leave the grass longer because it gets so little sun you want more grass blade there to get the sun but um, but today I did go back and and mow a second time I do just want to talk about the final mowing. You know, I'm sure, you know, some of you folks watching are, are saying, well, John, you're telling me to mow it high, but, you know, what, when do I mow it low, you know, or how low do I mow it? You know, and, and I'm going to be a little bit vague here. Here in the northeastern U.S., I think we're, we're shooting for like two to two and a half inches for our final mowing. Uh, you, want, you want the grass to be shorter Number one, so the leaves blow off of it, but number two, so, you know, insects and pests don't, um, you know, don't make a living in your lawn. Um, you know, your, your voles could, could enjoy tall grass and uh, insects and disease could also take advantage of, of tall grass. So I'm gonna say two to two and a half inches. And that also is gonna vary a bit because it really depends on how thick your lawn is. I mean. The lawn you're looking at here could very easily go down to two inches, but if, if you're the type of person that, um, you know, puts a ton of fertilizer on there and has really thick grass, if you take it down to two inches, you could do some, some serious damage, you know, you basically scalp the lawn. So I'm going to say when it gets later in the fall, you know, start dropping your height a notch at a time. And, and go lower down to something between two and two and a half uh, here in the cool season grasses, northeastern U.S., and, and just kind of play it by ear. You know, if, if you're scalping it or the mower's having trouble cutting or, you know, if, if you know what a scalp lawn looks like, you, you don't, you don't want to keep doing that. But th there's no hard and fast rule, but just short enough that the leaves blow off of it and you know critters aren't encouraged to live in it folks no matter what kind of lawnmower you have if you have a leaf blower go ahead and give your lawnmower a good uh, a good blow after you use it both for mulching and just in season uh just maybe it's just me but i just you know i always feel like the mower does a better job when it's clean and i you know, feel more proud about my machine and all that, all that stuff. Maybe that's just a me thing, I don't know. 
But, uh, you know, the mower you're looking at there, that Seamaster, is 20 years old. And, um, you know, you, you take care of your equipment, you buy good equipment, and um, it takes care of you and it's a pleasure to use. So, um, you know, maybe we can do some videos on equipment maintenance, you know, just basic equipment maintenance uh, on how to make a machine last, uh, you know, a, a really long time just doing common sense stuff. Well, thanks for watching today, folks. You know, I, I think I ended up rambling uh, a ton in this one, but I thought, you know, some of you folks might enjoy seeing what, um, I, don't, I don't know if I'd call myself a professional, but you know, what, what's involved in cleaning up leaves, both with the blower and the mower, and just talk about it a little bit. So maybe you got something out of it, maybe you didn't, but, um, Either way, uh, you know, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the unlike button. And, um, you know, if you like the, the stuff I'm publishing here, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And, uh, you know, feel free to go to the CT Scaper uh, YouTube channel. And uh, I've got a ton of videos about anything from landscape design, plants I like, uh, ton of videos about chainsaws, cutting firewood, uh, some equipment maintenance videos, a little bit of everything. Oh, and uh, one of my least popular uh, topics is maintaining my, uh, my Dodge pickup. But, um, you know, if you enjoyed this video and, and if you just like my personality, uh, there's plenty more uh, rambling videos of me, so feel free to subscribe. But uh, thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.